So this video will serve as an introduction to concentration and molarity. Um, concentration, um, when you think about what that is, um, we are essentially talking about how much stuff is in solution. That's the easiest way to think about it. Um, it's not always in a particular solution like water. It can be in something else. But typically it will end up in water. Um, just don't want to create that misconception that it's always water. Um, with that said, there's two different ways that we can look at concentration. We can say how much molarity there is in a solution. Another word that we'll be using is parts per million. Okay, um, So let me show you these units real quick. Molarity is first. And the units that we use for this is a capital M. So anytime that you see a 3 molar solution or a 4 molar solution, that's going to be your molarity. Um, we use this a lot with acids. They always have a certain molarity. And that just means how concentrated is it? How much stuff is actually in that solution? And by stuff, we're talking about particles, mass, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Okay, the way to calculate molarity... is the moles of the solute divided by liters of the solution, or liters of the solvent. Okay, This is how we could calculate molarity, moles divided by liters. Okay, um, I'm going to show you some videos just reminding you how to get from grams to moles, because you have to know how to do that. That's using the periodic table. Um, and then to find liters of a solvent or a solution, um, that's usually going to be given to you. Sometimes it's going to be given in milliliters, but we'll work through that as well. So those calculations we're going to work with later, um, but this is the general formula for molarity. Okay, um, There's a word that's titled molality. Now, we won't be using molality, but I do want you to be aware of it in case you ever see it. Okay, Molality is a, I can write it so that you know what that looks like. Okay, That's molality. Um, and what that is, is essentially the same thing as molarity, except for instead of dividing by the liters of the solvent, the, under the, the denominator is going to be kilograms of the solvent. So that's the only difference. Um, we don't use this a lot. Um, it's just a little bit hard to use because we usually use liquids. And liquids are usually in liters as opposed to finding the mass. We can do that, but we choose not to a lot of times. Okay. There is one more unit that we use that I just want to introduce to you, and that is parts per million. Parts per million, um, the units for this are ppm, parts per million. And the reason why we say ppm, parts per million, is there's also other ways that you can think of it. Parts per billion, parts per, bi parts per trillion. When we say that, um, that would be ppb, parts per billion, ppt, parts per trillion. That's how those are essentially, the units are described, I guess. Um, let's show you the equation and make sense of why we can change that easily. Um, when we think about parts per million, I'll just write ppm, okay? We always measure that in grams of solute divided by, since it's a million, we're going to measure it in one million grams of solution, okay? One million grams of solution or solvent. Okay, um, so grams of solute divided by 1 million grams of solution. Now, this number, when we think about essentially what it means, we would use this for very, very small traces of particles. For example, if we have the water, um, inside this water, let's just say it's tap water, 
inside of the tap water, there's certain limits that were allowed. Okay, the EPA only allows certain limits of, let's say, fluorine or chlorine or iron. You don't want too much of that. So what happens is the federal government regulates how much we can have. Okay, sometimes we can only have, let's say, 0.5 ppm of iron. If that's the case, then they would make sure that our water, when we drink it, only has 0.5 or less um, ppms of iron. So, if we were going to do parts per billion, as I mentioned, parts per billion, ppb, grams of solute, divided by 1 billion grams of solution. Okay? Um, and we'll use those every now and then, um, just to get you to know the difference between PPMs, PPB, what do those really mean? Okay, so as we move forward, uh, we're going to discuss these two. Calculations are important to this, so make sure you pay attention and make sure that you already know some of the basics of how to calculate these.